All right, you know what time it is. Neil Ratner, Rock Doc here with a story. Okay, yesterday was Eric Clapton's 75th birthday, and today I thought I would tell you a few things about slow hand, as Eric is known, that you might not know. But as usual, a little background first. <laughs> All right, so. Eric was attracted to the blues very early on, and especially the music of blues legend Robert Johnson. According to Clapton, the most important blues musician who ever lived, he was true, absolutely to his own vision, and as deep as I have gotten into the music over the last 30 years, I have never found anything more deeply soulful than Robert Johnson. His music remains the most powerful cry that I think you can find in the human voice. Really, it seemed to echo something I had always felt. All right, so by the time Eric was 16, he was already busking on London's West End. And then he started playing in different bands about a year later. And in 1962, he was asked to join the blues-based rock and roll band, The Yardbirds. And it was in The Yardbirds that Eric got his nickname. <laughs> Rhythm guitarist Chris Dreha told the story that whenever Clapton broke a guitar string during a concert, he would stay on stage and replace it. The English audiences would wait out the delay by doing what is called a slow hand clap. <laughs> Clapton's nickname of slow hand came from manager <laughs> Giorgio Gomelski, and it was an obvious pun on the slow hand clapping. All right. Now, during his time in the Yardbirds, the band shared the bill with the Beatles at the London Palladium. And this proved to be a very important gig for Eric because that's when he met George Harrison. As we all know, the two became great friends. George, which a lot of people probably don't know, even co-wrote the song Badge with Clapton for Eric's next band, Cream. Harrison, who is listed on the album as L'Angelo Misterioso, <laughs> also played rhythm guitar since Cream had only one guitarist, mainly Clapton. Now the title has nothing to do with the song. Clapton saw Harrison's notes and misread Bridge as Badge, and he thought that's what George named the song. So they used it for the title. The lyrics are not intended to make sense, and many of them were taken from a drunken conversation that George had with Ringo, although Ringo never did get any credit. Okay, now, what many people also don't know is that Eric did the solo on George's song, While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Clapton was very reluctant to go to a Beatles recording session, thinking the other Beatles wouldn't want him there. But Harrison was persistent. And actually, Eric's presence in the studio was good and cooled out the tension and arguing that had been happening between the other three. As a matter of fact, Eric became friends with John Lennon and subsequently played on Lennon's solo work. And when George walked out of the Let It Be sessions, the others seriously considered replacing him with Clapton, with John being his biggest supporter. Of course, that never happened. Paul wasn't really on board with it. Paul wanted George to come back. George eventually did come back. They finished those sessions, and then we all know what happened. The Beatles broke up anyway. Okay, now, Eric went through another series of bands, Blind Faith, Delaney and Bonnie, Derek and the Dominoes. Then he went solo, cleaned himself up from a life of drugs and alcohol. As a matter of fact, he even created a rehab in Antigua called Crossroads, which from what I understand is quite good. Okay, but in the 90s, tragedy struck. And ironically, it produced one of Clapton's greatest songs, Tears in Heaven. In March of 1991, Clapton's four-year-old son, Connor, was killed when he fell out of his mother's 53rd floor window. Really a tragic thing. And after isolating himself for a while to grieve, Eric began to work again and took on a project to write music for the film Rush. 
Now, he was working with songwriter Will Jennings, who described it in this way. Eric and I were engaged to write a song for a movie called Rush. We wrote a song called Help Me Up for the end of the movie. When Eric saw another place in the movie for a song, he said to me, I want to write a song about my boy. Eric had the first verse of the song written, which to me is all the song, but he wanted me to write the rest of the verse lines and the release. Time can bring you down, time can bend your knees. Even though I told him that it was so personal, he should write everything himself. He told me that he admired the work I did with Steve Winwood, and finally there was nothing else but do as he requested, despite the sensitivity of the subject. This is a song so personal and so sad that it is unique in my experience of writing songs. All right. Now, Eric used the song to help recover from the tragedy and said this, The writing of the song is the therapy. The toughness is doing nothing. From the time where everyone said goodbye to one another at the funeral and I was left at home. From that time to the time the song was finished, it was harder if I didn't play the guitar. All right. So that's it. Eric Clapton, a true artist and one of the greats. Let me play my little thing. All right, special announcement. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Starting next Saturday, April 6th, I am going to have a little show on WDST Radio Woodstock 100.1 on your dial up here. And if you're not up here, you can get Radio Woodstock 100.1. Uh, through uh, iHeartRadio. <laughs> so if you go on the internet and you Google iHeartRadio and you put in Woodstock, New York, that will come up and you can listen on iHeartRadio. If you're in the listening area up here in Woodstock, you can listen there. It'll be on at 3 o'clock. It's going to be called This Week in Rock. And I'm going to do a couple of stories like this. You know my cool little stories. But... Since I'm working at a radio station, I'll be able to use music again. <laughs> so uh, you'll hear my bad singing and everything else. At any rate, it's going to start tentatively. I'll let you know if there's a change. This next coming Saturday, April 6th at 3 p.m. to be repeated on Sunday at 11 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Rock Talk presents This Week <laughs> in rock. What else should I do? All right, so that's it for today. Rock Neil Ratner, Rock Doc, signing off. And, of course, I got to tell you about the book again. Still available. It's on all formats on Amazon. If you go to my website, I will still send you an autographed copy. Okay. Check me out next weekend, Radio Woodstock. I'll also be here on Facebook. That's it for today. Have a great weekend. See you soon. Neil Ratner, Rock Doc, out for now. Bye.